Melissa, do you know where Dr. Saduk is? Are we ready? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, faculty, staff, family, and friends. No, no music yet. Good morning, faculty, staff, family, and friends. It's my great honor to be here today to celebrate the commencement of the class of 2023. On behalf of the Avalon University School of Medicine, I would like to welcome you all to this momentous occasion. Today, we celebrate hard work, dedication, and perseverance of these outstanding students. These graduates have spent the past four years honing their skills and knowledge in the pursuit of becoming physicians. They have studied the human body, the human mind, and the human spirit. They have learned how to diagnose and treat disease, how to provide comfort and care, and how to heal the body and the soul. But more than just their academic achievements, these graduates have also demonstrated the qualities that make great physicians, compassion, empathy, and a commitment to service. They have shown a willingness to put the needs of others before their own, and they have demonstrated a passion for helping others. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Avalon University School of Medicine's graduating class of 2023.
This is always an exciting day for all of our graduates, family, guests, and Avalon administration and faculty. My name is Michelle Smith. I'm the executive administrator and, and registrar at Avalon University. Today, I'll be your MC. Graduates, this is your day, your stage, and a testament of your tireless determination over the past four years. As you graduates embark on your new careers, I know that you will make a difference in the world. You will heal the sick, comfort the suffering, and save lives. You will be a force for good in the world. You are about to embark upon an exciting, life-altering experience, one you will never forget. You are about to join an elite group of people who will now be your peers going forward. This day marks a wonderful milestone, not only in your lives, but also for Avalon University. And we couldn't be more proud of you all. So let's get to it. Why don't you guys have a seat? Thank you very much. Our first speaker today is Dr. Samir Fateh, president of Avalon University School of Medicine. Under Dr. Fateh's leadership, Avalon University has shown rapid growth and development, including the launch of new programs, the expansion of clinical rotations, and the recruitment of top faculty and students. Dr. Fateh is a passionate advocate for medical education and is committed to providing students with the knowledge and skills they need to become successful physicians. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Samir Fateh. Thank you, Michelle, for the kind words. And welcome, everyone, to uh, Avalon University School of Medicine's graduation. On behalf of Avalon University School of Medicine, I would like to welcome everyone uh, to this uh, beautiful day. This is by far one of the best days of the year for us, and it makes me very proud to stand in front of all of our graduates. I would like to thank Avalon University's Board of Trustees, deans, faculty members, chairman, and all of the members of the U.S. and Core Sub Administration, and everyone that's associated with Avalon University for being here on this special day. Graduates, the day has finally come. All of you should be very proud of yourselves for what you have accomplished. All of us at Avalon cannot be any happier for you, especially for being part of this journey through medical school, and watching you all grow into fine young professionals. The hard work does not end today, and as a physician, the hard work and continu continual development of becoming the best doctor that you can be will be for a lifetime. But for one day, let's not think about countless hours you have sacrificed to get to this point, and be proud of yourselves for what you have accomplished. Enjoy this moment and feel the significance of today, because it is the great memories that will last a lifetime. As you embark into the real world, never forget the journey you have taken to get to this point. I am very certain that there were many periods of your medical school where it was not easy and there have been thoughts and questions of, is this really something I want to do? But through your dedication and commitment, and even more, your passion for medicine, you made it to the finish line. Please do not forget the people that have helped you get to this point, whether it was a faculty member, preceptor, librarian, next door neighbor, or whomever said nice words of encouragement and that fueled your drive or said something that, to inspire you or was just there for you for support. Always be thankful and grateful to those who showed care for you along your journey. Avalon's core values are education, empathy, integrity, respect, and commitment. As medical doctors, graduates, please continue to exhibit and hold these values as you enter the real world. As our mission statement says, it is now, it is now your duty to serve communities locally and around the world and to be committed to patient safety and public health while maintaining the highest standards of professionalism and ethical behavior required for medical practice. Please do not ever lose sight of your obligations of being a doctor while carrying yourself with the strength of character that will shine through your patients and the people that you come across in the world. Today is not only a great accomplishment for you graduates, it is a day in which your family members, relatives, friends, and all of us at Avalon are showing great joy and happiness. You have demonstrated grace, dignity, and perseverance. You have put in the blood, sweat, and tears, and now you stand ready to receive your medical degree. 
Be proud of what you have accomplished and continue to be dedicated to becoming the best physician, physician you could be and an even better human being. I would like to end my speech by, with a quote from Anne Frank that reads, human greatness does not lie in wealth or power, but in character and goodness. People are just people, and all people have faults and shortcomings, but all of us are born with a basic goodness. Thank you, and congratulations to all of our graduates. Thank you, Dr. Samir. Now, usually at this time, you'll see in your programs, I would be introducing Dr. Shaket Fateh. He's the chancellor of Avalon University. For Dr. Fateh, this annual event represents the culmination of his vision. Part of his vision is that students of Avalon are family. In his welcome to new students, he states, you will be accepted with open arms. We embrace you for all that makes you special. Then we push you to become so much more. Your awesome family cheers you on to ever greater accomplishments, and no one will be cheering louder than me as you pursue your purpose in life. Unfortunately, for the first time since the inception of the school, Dr. Fate is unable to attend this year's commencement, but he sends his regrets and wishes all of you graduates the best in your future endeavors. Next, I would like to take a moment to introduce our keynote speaker for this year. Avalon University is proud to introduce Dr. Yamin Sadduk as the keynote speaker for the 2023 commencement. If you completed any of your clinical rotations in Mountain Vista Medical Center in Arizona, some of you, you graduates may already know Dr. Sadduk. He currently serves as Avalon as our clinical professor of internal medicine. He is also the director of the internal medicine residency program also at Mountain Vista. He is passionate about teaching, mentoring, and he is committed to providing all medical students with the best possible training. Here to impart his knowledge and wisdom to you graduates, I'm pleased to announce Dr. Yamin Sadduk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Buenos dias a todos. Hello everybody. Bonjour a tous. Thank you Michelle for that kind introduction and for inviting me to speak today. I am very pleased to join you in celebrating this special event of a long class 2023 student graduation ceremony. First, congratulations to all the graduates, your parents, family, leaders of Avalon University, faculty of Avalon, and staff who are celebrating with you today. We know that in the last few years, you put, you put in much effort, enthusiasm, and hard work to achieve this accomplishment and reach this pivotal moment. And it has been an honor for me as a faculty member to be a part of your education, supervision, and training, just to see how far you have progressed and how prepared you are to apply what you have learned on your patient care and to deliver the best health care. You should be incredibly proud of yourselves for accomplishing this goal. Well done. But as the cartoonist Gary Trudeau said, commencement speech were invented largely in the belief that outgoing college students should never be released into the world until they have been properly sedated. That's where I come in the keynote speaker. I will, very, I will be very brief and try not to sedate you too severely. Graduation is one of those steps in life that define the coming of age, the ending of era of life as a student or one being shown to the rope and moving on to the new stage in which you are a leader, a doer, and an achiever in the wider world. I am sure many of you have firm plans and have a good idea of what's coming next. Others have a pretty good idea of what you want 
to the next, a dream and a lot of hope to get you there. And some of you are just amazed when you go to this graduation point at all. Well, the coming time will be exciting. They will be trying, but they will all be dependent on you and your determination. I was, I came from a country that takes 18 hours, up to 20 hours of flight. I went to Setif University in Algeria where I did my biology, then traveled to Damascus University Medical School in Syria. When I graduated in 1990 as MD, I had a big plan for myself. And I was going to be single for many years, never have kids, find work in a lot of research and find a vaccine to, the cancer, to cancer, win the Nobel Prize, drive Mercedes, be millionaire in five years, live in a big house in my native country and travel the world in a private jet. You see, I plan to take it easy, no work too hard and enjoy life. And yet, here I, find, I found myself at graduation again. Another medical school, another 200,000 loan, but in a foreign country, country, United States, with a different language. Another coll college, New York College of Osteopathic Medicine, and different diploma, DO. I haven't been in my hometown at that time for 10 years, didn't see my family. And instead of traveling the world, I spent my vacation with my friend in New York at Long Island and drive a bit of, a bit of car. Although life didn't turn out the way I thought it would, I didn't regret a bit of it. I haven't failed, I have adapted and found what makes me happy and fulfills me. And so you will, and so will you. Life doesn't usually follow the plans you lay out for yourself. You will experience the highs and lows of life, the difficulties and the easy. And unfortunately, there may be too many difficulties and just not enough smooth sailing. Your true success will be defined by how you handle both of these life experiences. One important thing you should carry through your life is to be a learner, to be a teacher, and long life learner at the same time. Doctors are learners until they die. Doctors are learner, learners until they die. Do not give up when you teach. Do not give up on your teaching or on your student or on your residents, regardless of their acquaintance. I usually get on the personal statements or the feedback that this from my faculty that this student is eager to learn, is teachable. Yes, this is very important and you will be happy when you teach somebody who is teachable and eager to learn. But the success is when you teach the unteachable and who is not eager to learn. Don't give up on that. As William Friedrich Nietzsche, the philosopher, uh, the philosopher William Friedrich Nietzsche said, teach your friend how to fly, but if he fails, at least show him how to land safely. So don't give up. A lesson I learned during my career is learn how to appreciate others. Remember, we cannot stand on our own. Your achievement only happens with the help and support of the important people around us. Those people are your family, are your faculty, are the leaders of Avalon. So thank you to the parents, family, families and friends who stood by this graduate and supported them with encouragement, guidance and love that has brought us to this fabulous moment. Thanks also to the leaders of Avalon University, administrative staff, faculty and the faculty under the leadership of Dr. Wilson, the, uh, the Dean, and also Samir Fata, Dr. Samir Fata, the President, and all the uh, university administrative staff for their dedication to their student education. You all have worked very hard as one team to make our students on 
and Avalon University as strong as they should be. You have shaped these young ladies and gentlemen so they can be excellent future physicians and deliver the best health care to their patients. For that, I am sincerely grateful to all of you, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you, and I wish all the 2023 graduates the continued success and lifelong happiness you deserve. One thing I can say about Avalon, I have been good experience for the last 10 years with Avalon as a um, uh, faculty and as program director for uh, internal medicine. And one thing that is exceptional for Avalon University, many of the students that end up with us, they have special stories in their lives. And they are fighters. I tell you one story, I like it because it looks like my story in going to school. One of the students at six years old, six and a half years old, his dad took the boat and went into the ocean. He was driving the boat by himself just to go to on the other side of the ocean so he can get good life and more freedom. They spent 10 days on the ocean. They run out of gas, they run out of food, they run out of everything. A small, small dish of rice, they have to cook it with the water of the ocean, salty. The kid get dehydrated and almost died. Fortunately, a naval ship of United States helped them and took them to the other side, and here they end up in a refugee camp. He thought that he will be a few days, and then he moves along. He stayed 10 years in the refugee camp. Even with that, he was studying. After 10 years, the United States released all, uh, gave up in all the refugees in the world. So he ended up in a new country, doesn't know anything, the language, people, everything. And he have to work, no papers, no green card, no ID, so he has to feed himself and his family at age 16 years old. He has to go from home to home, from apartment to apartment to sell things so he can survive. And then he went into a college. He ended up having a certificate of, or diploma of electrical engineering. But the dream that he had and his father, he wants his son always to be a doctor. So he went and do something that's related to medicine. He became a pacer technician. He worked for that few years. Then he still had this dream. But now with all his gaps, what university or medical school that can hire this student? He didn't give up. And one of the schools that opened the doors for him after all of those universities didn't take him is Avalon University. I saw this student the first time at Mountain Vista and he surprised me after I read his personal statements. He worked very hard, he was very professional, he, he came even on his day off to see his patient and he represented Avalon very well. He sent his application to be, he wants to be a resident at Mountain Vista Hospital, he sent his application and here he was number four on the rank list, number four among 1,450 student application competing for five positions. That means he was on the top 5%. And he made Avalon University number four among 50 university national and international. I received application, 1,450 applications from all the world, from the United States and overseas. And Avalon at that time was in the rank number five. Congratulations. Please welcome this fighter, Michael Lay, and give him applause. Can you stand up? And thank you for his mom and dad, and thank you for the leaders in Avalon that gave this student a dream that he lost in his life. 
One thing that I always tell you is, now you are going to a clinical and hands-on, that doesn't mean that you forget what you learned in Avalon. Take your books with you. Because seeing patients is not only dependent on seeing patients, but you need to read about. One of the experts in education said, if you see patient without reading books, it's like you are sailing, sailing in the sea, sailing without a campus. But if you read the books without seeing patient, it's like you are not sailing at all. That means read books, see your patient, and teach. Sorry, I said that will be very brief. About very brief, there were uh, a professor that was famous in North Carolina University, and he was very famous. He did a lot to the university. He was dedicated to teaching, even in the community. He helped the community. He, as a husband, he was excellent to his wife, to his kids, and he died. So the uh, local magazine, they contacted his wife and told her, because he's famous, we have everybody to know about his death and his career and what he did. So can you tell us a story about him and his life? And she started talking to him that he was the best professor in the university. All the students, they like him. He did research. Also, he was a good husband, a good dad, etc., etc. So at the end of the day, the reporter called her and told her, Miss X, my boss just wants me to tell you that uh, it end up to 300 words, the report, and every word is one dollar, that means it costs you $300. He said, oh no, please just be very brief. Just say, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor George died. So she went from, went from $300 to $3. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saduk. That was wonderful. Thank you for addressing our graduating class. We really appreciate your commitment to be here today in support of Avalon, and your speech certainly showed that. At this time in our program, we would like to present an award. The Award of Excellence in the name of the late Abida Rajpura. Abida Rajpura grew up in a, is the sister of Avalon's Chancellor, Dr. Shaukat Fateh. Mrs. Rajpura grew up in the small town of Keshapura, India, and soon after marriage, moved to England. Being the eldest of four siblings, Abida was the guiding force in her family to continually show a desire and passion for education and always giving back to the community. Once her family was established in England, she and her husband opened up an all-girls school in her hometown in India, which is currently a sizable and well-established school that houses students from her hometown and surrounding cities. She was the, was the vice president of the school and would often travel to the school and to her great delight speak with all of her students. Abida's positive influence was felt by everyone that knew her, and she, always, she will always be remembered as a strong lady that cared deeply about her family and always showed just as much care for the people she knew. The Abida Rajpura Award of Excellence is to recognize a graduating medical student whom the faculty determines to exhibit excellence. The criterion for excellence includes academic performance, clinical acumen, communication skills with patients, their families, their peers, and faculty, as well as community service and contributions to the medical school. This year, the award is being given to our graduate, Dr. Sajad Huda. Dr. Samir Fateh will be presenting this award and here to accept the award on behalf of Dr. Huda is his sister, Samina. Samina, could you please make your way to the stage?
Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the graduate address. Our graduate speaker for class of 2023 is Dr. Vadehi Joshi. Vadehi is a student who continuously excelled in both academic and practical aspects of medicine. As a first generation immigrant doctor, Vadehi was driven by a genuine desire to make a positive impact in the medical field. Avalon is thrilled to announce that Dr. Joshi will begin an internal medicine residency in Chicago at Advocate Masonic Medical Center starting in July. Ladies and gentlemen, nation of years of hard work, sleepless nights, and endless cups of coffee. This is a momentous occasion, one that marks the end of a long journey and the beginning of an even longer one. Today, we celebrate the hard work, the dedication, and the sacrifice that each and every one of us has put into achieving this remarkable feat. We have pushed our limits, expanded our minds, and discovered the depths of our resilience. As we embark on this noble profession, let us always remember that behind every diagnosis, every treatment, and every decision, there is a human life, a person who is placing their utmost trust in us. As Sir William Osler famously said, the good physician treats the disease, but the great physician treats the patient with the disease. We have the incredible power to make a difference in their lives, to offer hope, solace, and healing. It is with the responsibility that we must honor and accept with humility, integrity, and unwavering commitment. In the face of challenges and adversity, let us never lose sight of our purpose. The path ahead may be arduous, filled with long hours, more sleepless nights, and difficult decisions, but it is during these moments that our true character will shine through, and we will find the strength to persevere. And so, as we enter this next phase of our journey, I want to remind you of a few things. First, always remember why you chose to become a doctor. Remember the passion and drive that led you here and hold on to it very fiercely. Let that passion fuel you when times get tough and let it guide you as you make difficult decisions. Always remember to remain lifelong learners, um, eager to embrace new advancements, research and technologies that will shape the future of medicine. Let us be the generation that pushes boundaries, challenges the status quo, and leads the way to groundbreaking discoveries and innovative treatments. Secondly, never forget that your pa patients are people and to never lose sight of the bigger picture at hand. Treat each patient with respect, the dignity, and the compassion that they deserve. Take the time to listen to their stories, understand their concerns, and build a relationship with them that goes just be beyond their illness. Finally, and arguably the most important of all, take care of yourself. Being a doctor is a demanding and challenging profession, and it's easy to get burnt out. Take the time to prioritize your physical and emotional health so that you can be the best doctor possible. Remember to lean on one another to support and uplift your colleagues. Our journey through medical school has taught us the value of teamwork, collaboration, and the strength that comes with, um, that comes from a united front. Together, we can overcome any obstacle, and together, we will forge a future that is brighter and healthier for all. In closing, I want to congratulate each and every one of you, and especially our families and faculty, on this incredible achievement. Without their endless support and the endless amounts of coffee that my brother made me, and the tough love given to me by my parents and their unwavering support, I would not be standing here before you today. I will remain eternally grateful. On a lighter note, let's not forget to make time for our families, our loved ones, our friends, and have some fun along the way. We are the future of medicine, and I am confident that we will make the world a better, healthier, and more compassionate place. Thank you, and congratulations, doctors.
Thank you so much, Vadehi. Next, our Vice President, Mr. Dilu Danani, would like to say a few words to our graduates. Mr. Danani? Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, students, graduates, family, friends, Evelyn Board of Trustees, faculty, and administration. I don't get to see our students very often, and today is a significant day for all of us involved in your medical education. We are proud of each of you for your achievement to reach this goal. Today we celebrate you and this day of recognition and accomplishment. However, I also want to remind you that while today concludes your, this phase of your learning requirements, you are beginning a new phase of lifetime of learning to be your best for yourself and those you serve. In, conclu in conclusion, con congratulations, well done, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Danani. Today we have a special guest here with us. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Anjana Samadar, the next incoming president of API, and that is the American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for inviting me to such a great event and important day in all your lives. I'm Anjana Samadar, a practicing gastroenterologist in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm also the incoming president for the Asian American Physicians of Indian Origin. Many hearty congratulations on this accomplishment. This is a historic moment to have the privilege to be in medicine with all its heartache and all its uplifting moments. Go forth and work caring for your patients and their families. The need, they need you now more than ever. I would like to invite all of you to become members of RP. Membership is free for medical students, residents, and fellows. It is a great networking opportunity and uh, you can use this platform to meet a lot of program directors uh, and fellowship directors and great mentoring opportunity. On behalf of RP, I would also like to invite all of you to attend our national convention in Philadelphia, July 6th to 9th, and come meet all your peers out there. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Samadar. The most awaited moment is here. Yes, it's now time we acknowledge the fruit of your hard work and discipline. You will now be receiving your prize degree, a symbol of your accomplishment. Let us now begin with the hooding of the graduates and the presentation of the Doctor of Medicine degrees. Hooding the graduates will be completed by Dr. Abdul Ghani, our Dean of Postgraduate Education, and conferring of the degrees will be done by Dr. Samir, President of Avalon University, with the help of our Board of Trustees, Mr. John Talstein and Mr. Richard Thompson. I would like to ask the graduating class to please follow the directions of your awesome staff and make your way to the stage. Guests, if you would like to take photos of your graduates, please use the aisle on the left-hand side. Please, no one should be in the middle aisle. Please be courteous as to not to block the other guests.
Nick Axon. Abdul Rahman Al Rifai <clears throat> Preeti Anam. Niampa Bakani Michael Ibisi. Hamza Ilahi. Marie Maria Ilahi <clears throat> Mariam Fada Fad Fada Fermita Frederick. Samina Huda. Vadehi Joshi. Panit Raj Kaur, magna cum laude. (laughs) 
Liba Khan. Shilpa Kamanini. Michael Kiam Lay. Ramsha Mahmood. <laughs> Anisha Mahotra Kaur. Neelam Kaur Mann. Ricardo Cordova Melendez. Lavisha Mirpuri Cum Laude. Farin Mosadak. <laughs> Julius Nagaratnam. Larab Hassan Nakvi. (laughs) 
Myowa Amazing Grace Olalikan, cum laude. Stephanie Pelenyi. <laughs> Mariam Kaisar. Zara Kayum. Sayada Quadri. <laughs> Mohan Gopachand Rayala. Tanvir Hussein Sheikh. Ispa Sheikh. Nicholas Andrew Steele. Shrishti Taneja Cum Laude. Deepa Venkataramani. At this time, I would like to ask our Dean of Clinical Sciences, Dr. Lanny Wilson, to lead our graduates 
in reciting of the Hippocratic Oath. Got to get my tassel right so that I can help you out with that when the time comes because we're going to go from the right to the left, okay? But that, that'll happen after we do the Hippocratic Oath. There are lots of versions of the Hippocratic Oath, um, modern versions that, that shorten it, but the Hippocratic Oath takes us back millennium, not just a few decades or centuries. This connects you with the, the family of medicine, as Dr. Fateh welcomed you to. It's a reminder of the important role that physicians play in society. It is a commitment to providing high quality care, to respecting patient autonomy, and to upholding the highest ethical standards. If you have a book that's in front of you, uh, I won't have to just say two or three words, that little larger portions so that it doesn't break it up so much. So let's recite the Oath of Hippocrates. I'll lead and then uh, you'll follow with each phrase. So here goes. I do solemnly affirm as did the ancient Greeks. By all that I hold most sacred that according to my ability and judgment I will keep this oath and its stipulations. I hold my teachers equal to my own parents. And extend to them the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will by precept lecture and every other mode of instruction impart a knowledge of the art to my progeny. And those of my teachers and to disciples bound by covenant and oath. According to the law of medicine. I will follow that system of treatment which according to my ability I consider for the benefit of my patients and abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous. I will exercise my art solely for cure of my patients and the prevention of disease. And will give no drugs and perform no operations for a criminal purpose, nor far less suggest such a thing. With honor and dignity, I will practice my profession, not per permitting consideration of religion, nationality, race, or social standing, to intervene between duty and my patient. Into whatsoever houses I enter, I will go for the benefit of the sick and will hold myself aloof from every voluntary act of wrongdoing or corruption. Whatever I may see or hear in the lives of others which ought not to be spoken I will not divulge reckoning that such should be kept secret.
While I continue to keep this oath unviolated, may it granted to me to enjoy life, may it be granted to me to enjoy life and the practice of the art respected by all people in all times. But should I trespass and violate this oath, may the reverse be. You are so good at that. You're going to be such wonderful docs out there, I can tell. Now, we'll, we'll uh, change the, change our castle from the right to the left. Welcome to the family of medicine. I'm going off script, and uh, this isn't on your agenda, but there, you may, may be seated now, by the way. Good job. Uh, there are certain times when we, uh, we need to pause and thank people for their good work, and such is the case with Dr. Augustine Wong. Maybe some of you who did your family medicine in the Chicago area uh, had him as your preceptor and know how wonderful a teacher he is. Dr. Wong uh, was our keynote speaker at last year's commencement uh, celebration. Uh, today, we'd like to thank him for his years of service and hope that he returns as chair of the Department of Family Medicine sometime in the future. But since he's leaving that post, we have uh, just a gift of thanks. So Dr. Wong, would you come up and receive our thank you from Avalon University? Welcome to say something if you'd like, sir. Uh, it has really been an honor uh, and privilege to serve with Avalon. Uh, I've learned a lot from everybody, from the dean or the chairs, um, and it actually makes me feel insignificant, uh, to be honest, and really have been humbled. It really has been a pleasure. Thank you. You can see why we appreciate this mild-mannered gentleman. Back to you, Michelle. Thanks, Dr. Wilson. Before I address the graduates in closing remarks, I'd like to take a moment to thank those of you who are so important to, su to the success of this event every year. First and foremost, to our newest graduates, this day would not be possible without your hard work, commitment, and dedication. I would like to thank the core team at Avalon University. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you to everyone. Also, thank you to our island faculty and administrative support staff. The remarkable support provided to these students has been instrumental in their successes. Thank you to the staff at Stamba Auditorium Thank you, Courtney, for providing photography services. And finally, to all of the preceptors and coordinators of Avalon University School of Medicine who work so hard with our, with our students during rotations. You continually give back to education and are crucial to the success of our students. Graduates, today is the culmination of what I'm sure has been a challenging and hopefully also a very rewarding experience. You'll be feeling a great range of emotions, relief that you've made it, pride in your abilities, a sense of reward in the recognition of your qualification, and perhaps also a sense of excitement and expectation as you think ahead to the next leg of your journey and what adventures and opportunities that will bring. Stop and reflect for just one moment. Think back about all that you've been through to arrive at this moment. Keep in mind that one day you will have the power to make a difference. Use it well. This day signifies a new beginning for each and every one of you. 
but never stop learning, never stop asking questions, and never forget that medicine is an art as well as a science practiced by doctors and researchers who bring to the bedside and to the bench not only technology and training, but also their humanity, caring, and concern. In addition to earning the degrees conferred upon you today, you have earned the right to be associated with a very elite group of people. Today, you hold something that few people are privileged to sign behind their name, the letters MD. So this is your moment. Take it all in. As you immerse yourself in this experience, as you take in the final moments of this graduation ceremony, give a thought to what is to come. Stay humble and stay strong. Work hard and appreciate all you've got. After all, there are plenty of people who would give anything to be in your shoes. Tomorrow, new challenges and opportunities await you that will test you to improve yourselves as individuals. As you walk out together, take pride in what you're walking away from, a job well done. As you continue in this journey, may you look back to this stage in your life with fondness and pride. Enjoy your day of celebration with your family and friends. On behalf of everyone at Avalon University School of Medicine, congratulations, graduates. We are all so proud of you. You worked hard, you succeeded, and now you should celebrate. Graduates, please stand for the recessional. The staff will guide you out for a brief mandatory alumni meeting. After that, you will join your family and friends and enjoy the luncheon provided in the, in the ballroom downstairs. Guests, if you could please remain in the auditorium until the recessional is complete, and then after which you can make your way down to the ballroom where lunch is being served. Your graduates will meet you there once that short meeting is finished. Thank you all for your attendance today.